Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would talk about this topic that I found very particularly interesting. And this is going to be a topic, this overall is going to be a video about the Japanese monster, the great Japanese talent, Mr. Naiwa Inoue, who overall has been somewhat very heavily promoted for the past several years, or at least I've heard about him for the past several years. And ever since then, I've been watching him, as I'm sure overall many of you have been. And Naiwa Inoue, when I really take a look at him within the past several years, I don't really think that there's any dispute about it. He might be the most dominant fighter that I've seen overall within the past several years. At least when we talk about the era of Canelo Alvarez, Terrence Bud Crawford, Vasily Lomachenko, Alexander Usyk, Errol Spence Jr., Tyson Fury, etc., etc. Whoever else you want to put in that category. Naiwa Inoue might be the most dominant fighter that I've seen overall within that era. And Iowa in a way, once again, in this performance overall against Mr. Noni de Donaire in that of the rematch, he did show up very, very decently well. And the reason overall why this win actually was now a decent amount greater is because, of course, the first fight against that Noni de Donaire was a very, very decently competitive fight. So, of course, a lot of people, including myself, heading into this fight, thought maybe that Noni de Donaire would once again give it that of a competitive run, or at least that the fight would last a little bit of a while. The fight not only was not competitive, it didn't last a while at all. And Nonito, or excuse me, Naiwa. Anyway, he was able to knock out the Filipino flash, Mr. Nonito Donair, and that of just two rounds. And overall, Naiwa, in a way, once again proved that he probably might be the most dominant fighter from bantamweight down. But the big question is about Mr. Naiwa, in a way, after this performance, because I am actually seeing a certain amount of arguments from this, especially ever since Canelo Alvarez ended up losing to that of Dimitri Bivol, and in my opinion, losing his number one pound for pound spot. What does that mean overall about who is the number one pound for pound fighter? And does Naiwa in a way truly believe, or overall, does he truly deserve to be within that number one pound for pound conversation? What I'll say is this, I believe that Naiwa in a way, I believe that Naiwa in a way, debatably, might be the all-around most talented athlete in all the boxing right now. I think that Naiwa Inoue also has dominance on his side. I think that he really has been the most dominant fighter within the past several years. He is a very entertaining fighter to watch. He also is very decently skilled. However, I cannot have him, at least in my opinion, within that number one pound for pound conversation. Just like I would say about Javante Tank Davis, just like I would say about maybe some other fighters that I believe have not necessarily, you know, had that of the greatest resumes, but they do look extraordinarily dominant in terms of their athletic ability and the skills that they bring to the table. Just like Javante Tank Davis, I think that Naiwa, in a way, I think that he is an extraordinary fighter at his best, and he certainly is an extraordinary athlete. When you take a look at Mr. Naiwa, in a way, I think that his power and I think that his speed and the way that he moves and his decent footwork, Naiwa, in a way, he truly is a great fighter to behold. But I cannot necessarily have you within that number one pound for pound conversation when, in my view, I don't really think that you have really any A-plus victories within your career. To be quite honest with you, it's really even a debate if Naiwa Inoue really has even any A-grade wins in his career. There are no Juan Francisco Estradas on his resume. There are no Roman Chocolate Tito Gonzalez's. You know, there's no Steve on Fulton's. There's no Brandon Figueroa's. There's none of those guys on his resume. And Naiwa Inoue, even though I do think that he is a very dominant athlete, even though I think that he is a very, very decent fighter, for him, in my view, to be within that top 10 pound, excuse me, to be within that top five or overall that number one pound for pound conversation, the fighters that he's going to have to start beating are going to be fighters that, in my view, have a legitimate chance over him, or at least fighters that have somewhat of name recognition. So that means fighters like that of a Roman Chuck, the Tito Gonzalez, those are fighters of a Juan Francisco Estrada, a Stevan Fulton, who I believe is one way class above. Now, the Nonito Donaire win, especially the rematch, I thought was very decently impressive because, once again, the first fight was very, very decently competitive. And Naiwa Inoue showed that he was able to adjust like what some other all-time great fighters do. But can we really call Naiwa Inoue an all-time great fighter at this point in time? Because if we really take a look at his career, who really overall has he really potentially beat? Has he really beaten any A-grade fighters or at least clear A-grade fighters? Just like I would say about Javante Tank Davis, besides that Leo Santa Cruz win. And that overall does create a little bit of a problem when, in my view, certain people try to enter him into that number one pound for pound conversation. 
I think that he's a very entertaining fighter. I think that he's an extraordinary talent in terms of his athleticism and also in terms of his skill set. But if Naya in a way, in my view, is going to become in that number one pound for pound conversation, you're going to start going after, you're going to have to start going after, you're going to have to start overall fighting fighters with certain name recognition. Now, I'm not sure if certain fighters have always been avoiding him or whatever, but basically, this is a conversation about does Naya in a way deserve to be in that same conversation with some of the people in boxing right now that possibly deserve that number one pound for pound title? And now that Canelo Alvarez, who in my view was the clear undisputed pound for pound king in boxing, now that he has lost his number one pound for pound spot by losing to that of Demetri Bivol, in my view, the pound for pound conversation comes within four fighters. Overall, you have Alexander Usyk, who I think is debatably there, who is an undefeated fighter, and all in all was able to get that great victory over that of AJ Anthony Joshua, as well as beat up a somewhat decently talented cruiserweight division. You also have Terrence Bud Crawford, who is a three-weight division champion, and if he's able to beat Errol Spence Jr., it's going to be pretty hard to deny, in my opinion, Terrence Crawford's possible true number one pound-for-pound pound ranking, at least undisputedly at that point. You also have Errol Spence Jr., to where if he beats Terrence Crawford, he certainly can be there. And then you also have Tyson Fury, in my view, that is within that conversation as well. Is Naya in a way on any of those fighters' levels at the current moment in time? I can't necessarily say that. And it's not that I don't think that he's not a great talent. It's not that I don't think that he is not someone of a decently great fighter. But how great are you really? Because I have not really seen you in a match against a fighter that really has been on your same level really ever within your career. And I have a great amount of respect for Naya in a way, just like I have a great amount of respect for that of a Javante Tank Davis or maybe someone else all in all that really, you know, looks great, but does not really have that all great of a resume. But at the end of the day, I need to see you against real A-grade fighters. So even though Naya in a way, in my view, I think that he is a great fighter, he really cannot be in that same conversation in terms of the pound for pound list in my view, he cannot be in the same conversation with that of a Canelo Alvarez. He cannot be in the same conversation with that overall as a Terrence Bud Crawford or an Errol Spence Jr. or an Alexander Usyk or a Tyson Fury. Why is that? Because if we were to talk about Terrence Bud Crawford, even though I don't think Terrence Crawford really has an A-plus resume, he at least overall has that win over Sean Porter. And that win over Sean Porter is bigger than any of the wins that Mr. Naya in a way, in my view, has within his career. Now, of course, recently he did defeat that of Mr. Nonito Donaire. But Nonito Donaire, in my view, really has not been the same fighter, one could argue, ever since his loss to Mr. Guillermo Rigondeau. And pretty much ever since then, Nonito Donaire has really never been looked at as the same fighter ever again. He's never been in that top 10 pound for pound conversation. I do give Naya Inoue credit, especially for how dominant he was in this rematch, because I believe the only reason why they had this rematch, or one of the reasons, is because. Nonito Donaire was able to capture a belt at the bantamweight division. I believe maybe it was the WBC belt. I don't necessarily remember. But he was able to beat a couple of undefeated prospects in order to win that belt. So obviously Nonito Donaire was still at a decent point in his career. But I'm not going to count that in my view as big of a win as what a Chocolatito Gonzalez would be or Juan Francisco Estrada or Stevon Fulton or someone of that sort. Because Nonito Donaire, in my view, he is not at the point, he is not at the prime of his career. And one may even debate that this was not even an A-grade win. I'll give it an A-minus just because Nonito Donaire very clearly was a decent threat. He was a person that was coming off at least beating a couple of undefeated prospects. So like, I can't say that he was completely washed up, but I can't say that he was the same fighter from several years ago either. So it was a very decent win. But Naya in a way, in my view, to be within that conversation, he is going to have to up his resume. It just is what it is. Because if we compare him once again to Crawford, Crawford has that win over Sean Porter. All right, if we compare him to Errol Spence Jr., Errol Spence Jr. has the wins over Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, Kell Brook when he was a decent fighter, and maybe even a couple of others that I'm not personally thinking of at the time. If we compare him to Alexander Usyk, Alexander Usyk was able to unify a very decently talented cruiserweight division, and then he had, in my opinion, at the current moment in time, when he beat Anthony Joshua, he beat Anthony Joshua when Anthony Joshua was on my top 10 pound per pound list. So Alexander Usyk has to be ahead of him. Tyson Fury was able to beat Vladimir Klitschko several years ago when he was one of the top five, top three pound per pound fighters in the world. And all in all, he also was able to defeat Deontay Wilder very dominantly, who in my opinion never was a top 10 pound per pound fighter, but a top 20. And then of course, all in all, you know, 
There might be a couple of others. And Canelo has to be at number five now, in my opinion. And his resume, of course, is undisputedly probably the best in all of boxing at the current moment in time. I just can't have him at the number one pound for pound spot right now because he ended up losing his last fight, so I need to see how he recuperates. But we'll see all in all what ends up happening. But it's going to be very personally interesting to see where Naiwe Inoue goes from here. I would love to see him fight a Stephon Fulton. I would love to see him fight maybe a Brandon Figueroa to see how he does compared to Stephon Fulton or Roman Chocolate, Tito Gonzalez, or Juan Francisco Estrada. It would be very, very interesting to see how those fights end up. And he is going to have to face those fighters eventually, overall, if he is going to eventually be within the number one pound for pound conversation. So the current moment in time, I cannot rank Naiwe in a way as the number one overall pound for pound fighter, but he is the most dominant fighter in the world of boxing today, at least debatably. The problem is, is that I can just not have you at the number one pound for pound spot just because you look the most dominant. You also have to look the most dominant or overall be dominant against a grade tier competition. That's what made Canelo Alvarez the number one pound for pound fighter and Vasily Lomachenko and Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Andre Ward and Roy Jones Jr. Because they beat the best competition available. Right now, Naiwa in a way, whether it is his fault or not, I cannot put him on that level. But I do believe that he is a very special fighter. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see where he goes from here. But anyways, that's really about it for today. I just thought that that would be very particularly interesting. And I'm very excited to see maybe where Naiwa Inoue goes from here. He could unify the bantamweight division. I believe that there's only one belt left. But Naiwa Inoue apparently also stated that there is a possibility that he may go up and wait. And a fight between himself and maybe a Mr. Stephen Fulton would be a very, very big fight in my opinion. So we'll see all in all what happens. But anyways, that's really about it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.